good afternoon. Welcome to Mark 7 Ministries. Mark 7 means I'm in the Essex County area. And I want to stay around my topic because it helps me with my message today. I want to give you a topic called Batman Inside of Gotham City. Batman Inside of Gotham City. Batman Inside of Gotham City. I want to drive home uh, really specifically your location is your allocation. God bless you, Rachel Rodriguez. Sometimes because as the body of Christ, we're very ego-driven and ego-striven. We think we're sent to everybody. We think we're called to win everybody to the Lord. That We ourselves, our ministry, our fingerprint is called to bring everybody in. And I realize that sometimes when you go for everybody, you lose your somebody. You're not sent to everybody, you're sent to certain bodies. I really, really believe that prayer and fasting and, and giving tithes and offerings positions you to find out the area you're called to and focus on it. And there's an anointing that comes on you while you're in your area. Now, that area can expand, it can grow, God, God can start you off with three inches and then increase it to 12 and then increase it to three feet. You know, he can increase it to yards. And he can, God can increase a spot if you're faithful over the spot. Sometimes you meet novice preachers or people just getting into the game of ministry. They want the whole world right now. And then they're trying to make you feel like they know more than you. I, I just got in and I'm already got a large church of a thousand devils. <laughs> because numbers of bodies does not determine the effectiveness of ministry. I've been talking about the Batman TV series. And most of you understand the Batman back in the 60s and 70s. Which I call the real Batman. And I used to always watch that half an hour series with my family and my father. Same bat channel, same bat time. And sometimes they like Batman because he'd be put in a trap. And they'll make you watch the program tomorrow. See, you know, they'll, they'll lock you in like the stories. and keep you all locked in. And then on Friday, you know, and the stories, you got the juiciest part of the story not revealed so you stay locked in on Monday and the reason why these stories are written like this is to keep you locked in so you can see the advertisement and buy the products there's always a game behind the madness so when we talk about the Batman in Gotham City I'm specifically showing you that when God appoints you and anoints you for certain ministries he puts you over a certain area or certain territory and tell you to be faithful over a few and I'll make you ruler over many. So your allocation is your location and your location is your allocation. Sometimes you may be anointed for letter A, but you're going after letter B. And the Lord said, I didn't anoint you for letter B. I anointed you for letter A. Like if you really study the scriptures, Paul was really sent to Gentiles and Peter was sent to the Jews now they had a crossover but specifically God raised up Peter to deal with the Jews and God raised up Paul to deal with the Gentiles and um, Paul had such a desire for his Jewish people you know and God said he was really sent to Gentile kings that was his original purpose but there was times I felt like Paul was so determined to see his people saved. He wasn't listening. And so I'm going for Gentiles, Jews. He like he went for it all. But Paul got rejected so much. When you get about to like the 17th or 18th chapter of Acts, Paul makes this statement. I'm tired of dealing with the Jews. I'm going to go talk to the Gentiles. When I read that, I was like, duh. Duh, duh, that was the allocation in the first place. And I met people who were trying to force themselves 
and lanes of ministries that God didn't call them to. You know, there's a very freeing feeling when you can make statements like this. I'm not called to do that. I'm not wired for that. And I can even recommend pastors and leaders who are better at certain things than I am. I can say, now go get Pastor Lassiter. He's a better dress preacher than I am. Uh, go get what's his name. He's better. Uh, go get Reverend Maurice. He's better in black history. Uh, go get that. I can recommend other pastors and leaders who are better at something than I am. If you can't recommend other people, you're arrogant. You're stuck up. Because you're not sent to everybody. Let me tell you something, y'all. The real Batman on TV, his main location was Gotham City. Now, this is, I know this sounds crazy how I teach this stuff. I teach a lot of OSI. I call it Operating Supernatural Intelligently. And I, turn, I take a lot of uh, fictional programs and cartoons and even haunted movies and take the principles out and show you biblical non-fictional truths that can blow you away if you watch movies with a biblical mindset. Batman was known for pushing back the evil in Gotham City. He wasn't, I mean, the, the TV series centered, oh God, look at this, this is crazy. Oh my God, they got a fire over here. Why, Tim, you just can't make some of this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. Oh boy. We have we have a problem in the body of Christ because she continues to think that she is sent to everybody. And I got to help people out. The body of Christ is sent to everybody, but you as a member in the body of Christ is not sent to everybody. It is purposely wired and set up so that you have to depend on other folks to do the job that you can't do. See that? See that? That is, uh, oh boy, can't even see that. Can you see something? That is one of our greatest problems in the body of Christ because we actually think uh, we're sent to every city, every town. And God says, no, there are certain people that are sent specifically to Gotham City. Now let me break it down to you. Some of you are sent specifically to the high school audience, some of you are sent to the grammar school audience. Some of you are sent to preschoolers. Some of you are sent to young adults. Some of you are sent to adults. Some of you are sent to the older adults. Some of you are sent to seniors. Some of you are sent to the populace that have lost their mind due to the aging process. When you find where you're sent, let's hear me close you up. When you find where you are sent and you're able to embrace the area you're sent to and be faithful to it, God can increase the territory. But sometimes due to greed and egotism, we want to be God's gift to everybody. Let me tell you something. Stop chasing waterfalls, man. Stop chasing everything God hasn't called you to do. It is okay to say, I'm glad you went to support that program because that's not what God has sent me. I'm so glad you're in that protest because God didn't send me there. It's okay to do that. Don't feel guilt-ridden because certain folks are called to do certain things that you're not called to do. There is an anointing on where God sends you. Watch this, Michelle. Watch this, Linda. Watch this, Thaddeus Parker. When I used to watch the Batman series, I was so turned on by how the police department would put on the Bat single because certain villains would show up in Gotham City and that police department could not solve the crime. So we would call it a big crime. So that big crime cannot be solved by the normal police department. So it will put on the bat single to go get Batman who's wired for that level of crime. Now, is that biblical? Yes, it is. Let me tell you why. Because Jethro told Moses, you can't do all the big and little crimes. He said, set aside 70 elders, take what's on you, and put it on your 70 members. And the bigger things you can handle but the smaller matters give to the 70 elders because if you keep doing what you're doing, surely you will wear out. You know, that's a biblical principle. Do you know that, Deborah Armstrong, that what Chief Gordon does in the TV series of the Batman, a Batman and Robin that came on TV back in the late 60s and the early 70s 
it was all about Gotham City. And so Batman and Robin was hired by the police department to come and handle crime they couldn't handle at certain levels. So when they got these major villains, you know, like the Joker, the Riddler, you know, Catwoman, you know, uh, Mr. Freeze, King Tut, you know, you saw it, the Riddler. These were main villains that the police department could not solve. It was very intrinsic evil. And so they had to go get the Batman and Robin to push back the evil where? In Gotham City. I really believe that prayer and fasting, Reverend Maurice, helps you to find out your location. I think when God starts moving things around and moving us into different states and different places because there's an anointing that awaits us. You know what God told me? He said, he said, he said, McDuffie, you have limited yourself to Patterson. And he says that city after a while gets used to you. And it just, that's just said, Reverend McDuffie, he's known for jumping out of cars and make a lot of noises. He says, there's an audience outside of Patterson that will adore you and love you. He says, the familiarity of you have gotten full used to you. So let me shut that doorway down and find some people in other counties and other areas that will, watch this, embrace your Batman anointing. See, God had to blast me from this thinking of, I got to live and die in my city to change it. God said, no, you don't. Spread. I'm giving you a special anointing to spread. I'm bringing you a new people through social media that will embrace your Batman anointing. See, I know that sounds crazy, but I realize, man, some of you are chasing and want the validation from people and organizations that don't plan on giving it to you because they don't like you. They don't like you. They don't want you. And we're so thirsty to be accepted, so thirsty. And guys, you're wasting your time. He said, if you do what I tell you to do, I got a special anointing that you be able to push back the evil in the area where I am sending you. Sometimes, watch this, I want you to get this. Your need being supplied, your job, your career, even your millions and billions of dollars might be located in an area you have not gotten to yet. Oh, gosh. Oh, my God. Look at C.R. Marie, C.B.C. Yes, son, you're right with me, man. Look at this. We often miss the bat signal, and because of that, nothing gets cleaned up. Oh, y'all better hear that. That is deep, Reverend Maurice. <laughs> oh, the bat signal comes out. God is singling us. All right. Boop, 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 boop. I need you in North Carolina. Boop, 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 boop. I need you in South Carolina. Boop, 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 boop. I need you in Virginia. I need you. And you said, well, I'm going to stay right here in Harlem. God said, I didn't tell you that. I already got somebody in Harlem. I need you in another state. I need you in another county. I need you just on a different road. Uh, stop living on New Street when I bring you to Mum Avenue. See, we are very, very, very stuck. And Clarissa, God is saying, if you go where I tell you to go, I will use you mightily. Allocation is location. Location is your allocation. Now, let me tell you why this is so heavy on me. I was watching a clip. It's on my page. And I forgot who the guy that put this, but he did the clip on my page. I reposted it. And it's a picture of an eagle carrying a little backyard dog. It like a nice white dog. God bless you, Elsie. And the singer, that's on my page, said, yo, you better watch your pets, especially when you live around the mountains. Look like a bald eagle picked up this pet dog. Now hold it. Let me explain this to you, right? This is very key. And this is why this is so important to understand this, right? Are we mad at the bald eagle? And really it wasn't a bald eagle. It really was a golden eagle. A golden eagle is much more larger than a, than a bald eagle. But... Here's the point. Are we mad? At, are we mad at the eagle? Because an eagle is an eagle? The eagle doesn't care whether or not that's your pet dog. That eagle sees the dog in its location as its next meal. It doesn't care that that's your pet dog. 
because you're in the area, watch this, of his location. Because in his location is the food to be allocated. So if you're going to live up in the mountains, if you're going to live up where eagles fly, or, you know, then you better be much aware of what's in your backyard and what's around you. Because eagles are not making apologies for swooping down and picking up your pet dog or your pet cat. It don't care if you crying. That eagle is saying, no, this thing is in my, watch this, in my allocation. It's in my area. It's in my zone. And so this eagle swoops down, and please give me, this eagle swoops down and snatches this meal to live. This is very important to get this. So my thing is, are you mad at the eagle for being an eagle? Are you mad at the tiger for being a tiger? Or are we mad at ourselves because we're not aware of our area and where we live and what's around us? It could have been a harpy eagle. Harpy eagles and golden eagles are a little bit larger than bald eagles. I mean, golden eagles have been known to pick up goats and sheep and fly them up someplace and drop them. But it always depends on where you live. I never forget a few years ago I was doing Ubering up like in the mountains. And I had a ride and someone took me like up in the mountain area. And I happened to park my car and I just turned my mountain thing. I turned on my Uber signal. And I saw this guy walking his poodle down the street. And a uh, little poodle, looked like a little French poodle, a little small poodle. And the Holy Spirit looked up in the sky and there was a there was an eagle just doing this, watching this man walk his little poodle. I'll pull him next to me. I say, yo, man, you see an eagle up there? He looked up and said, oh, shucks. Like he wasn't paying no attention. He ran his dog back in the house. Like I really alerted him. And that daggone eagle was, was doing one of these numbers, Clarissa and, uh, was, was doing this, was doing this. He was circling his location, which is his allocation. Now, listen to me. Now, that, now, now you may not think that's a deep revelation, but I figured something out, man. A lot of what we call, you know, community problems and things wrong with the police department and wrong with the mayor and wrong... It's basically a church problem because the leadership doesn't know which area, doesn't know which allocation or its location, and doesn't know who they're sent to. Yeah, that's what it's called, Sean. Tri tri uh, triangulating. Thank you, brother Sean. See, that ego knows that it has the power to swoop down and grab an animal on the ground. And because they got great sight, great vision, this is a little bit different than the bat. They use their eyes and they can see, they got, you know, some of these birds got 20-5 vision, 20-10 vision. It simply means, you know, when you stand in front of a chart 20-20, how do you see things 20 feet away from the chart? The eagle's eyesight is so powerful. What you need 20 feet, the eagle sees it real close up, far away, two feet. And like, they just stand two feet in front of the chart. We don't know what to do with the location we allocated. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, yes, yes. So a lot of times when I saw the article, and I, it's on my page. I got to see it. This eagle is flying away with someone's pet dog. Do you think that eagle gives a rat's behind whether or not that's your pet dog? They don't care. You know who fault this is? The owner. Because the owner probably let his dog run out in the backyard. I said, yo, man, you're in the mountains. Eagles fly in high places. They're looking for their next meal. They're trying to save their nests. They're trying to keep their family going. I don't care whether or not that's your dad got pet dog. Same thing for foxes and wolves. You got to know your location, man. And knowing your location helps you get your allocation. 
Yo, folks are making me laugh. It is so crowded in the city. It's so crowded in the city. I'm like, yo, do you live in the city? Huh? When I go to New York, man, so many people in New York walking up and down 7th Avenue on Broadway. I said, where you at? You in New York? You in New York? You in Manhattan? You on 7th Avenue on Broadway? Yeah, that's what people do, you know, man. And, 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 why are we shot? Wow. You know, it's so cold this season. I mean, yo, it's four seasons. Uh, winter, spring, summer, and fall. It's not Florida. So why are you complaining when it's cold? Why are you complaining when it's hot? Why? why? Because we don't understand the power of allocation is location. Thank you, Sean. Share, share, brother. Keep sharing. Eagle can see two miles away. That's ridiculous, man. And can see a rabbit, a little dog. I said, God, I wish the body of Christ would learn from the animal kingdom. I see why in Psalms 19, it says that the heavens and earth would declare God's glory. When you study the heavens and the earth, you study everything about the heavens and the earth, and you learn principles that you apply to your life. And you'll be the better for it. You'll be smarter, you'll be wiser, and you'll be smooth. Man, nothing is more smooth than someone that you can't guess their next move. It's sexy when folks can't figure you out, man. It's powerful when they're looking at you and you don't say nothing. They're trying to figure you out. You become a riddle. You become like, ah, oh, God, I wonder what McDuffie's next move is. I can't. I had this guy who was running a, a boys' club. And I never, he said, he said, Rev, I'm one of your fans, man. He said, I watched your page. I watched you on Madison Avenue. He said, you were, he said, you didn't know, I, I was your fan. I say, who's this McDuffie guy? Oh my God, always in court, always on the front page of the paper. He said, but you were, he said, I'm a fan of yours. <laughs> I was like, oh, what do you mean, you're a fan? He said, because you ain't scared, man. You out there, but you don't care. I said, yeah, I said, I'm kind of, that's my strength and my weakness. You know, I'm out there, you know, you get support, you get folks that hate you. I said, you got to keep on going. There's a good part of that, and there's also a scary part. Because I tell them, your family don't want you out there too much. You're afraid somebody's going to hurt you, scared, you know. Your mama, more concerned with your dad, think you ought to stop. So there's a trick. There's a, there's a trickiness to it, and there's a level of effectiveness to it. But if you know what you call to do and where you're located, it, get, it keeps you at peace and at rest because... I'm anointed for this. I'm wired for this. And I wouldn't tell half the people to do what I'm doing because you're not me. But if something in you is being attracted to my KOM aura, I don't like that word, but attracted to the anointing, then there's something in you that wants to find out why you was born. And my job is to train and equip you. You know, I was thinking about this, right? I was staying with my theme, uh, the Batman in Gotham City. And when I looked at the, the TV series Batman that got the Gotham City right, the funny thing is, is that, you know, Chief Gordon will put out a bat signal, Reverend Maurice, to let Batman know we reached a place in the criminal world that we can't solve. And so we need extra help, you know? And I thought about this, right? This is this is why I really believe when Philip was leading folks to Christ in Samaria, Acts chapter 8. He got to a level where he says, okay, I've gone as far as I can. Let me go get Apostle Peter and John to come bring the Holy Ghost. So he knew where to stop. And then he said, okay, this is where I level out at. And he went and summoned Apostle Peter and Apostle John. And they came into the area, the location to allocate the Holy Ghost. This is Acts chapter 8, man. Maybe Acts 8 or 8, or I think it's Acts 9 and uh, or 8 and 9. And you'll see this whole story of how things are delegated and passed off to other people. Only we in the body of Christ want to be the answer to everybody. I have had such an enjoyment in telling folks, no, not coming. Not doing that this season. That's not what God called me to. And I would kindly turn you down. No, God didn't tell me to do that. No. And I'll be, I, and I find it, I, I really am excited when I say, you know, that person can go. Go get this person. This person's better for that. I'm, matter of fact, I've actually turned down engagements to speak. I've been called to preach certain programs, and I say, I can do it, but I know someone that's better for that than I am. And I can recommend people. I can, man, it feels good to recommend other people who are better in a certain location than you are. It takes humility, though. 
because if you want to be the hero to the eighth grader, the hero to the high school, the hero to the young adult, the hero to the adult, the hero to the senior citizen. And I think that we can do some of these things temporarily, but let me tell you what's going to save the body. When you start saying things like this, I'm the Batman called the Gotham City. And now if there's an international crime that needs Thor, I'm going to call the Avengers headquarters and signal for Thor because there's a God coming and needs a battle. I'm going to stick with my, uh, my local uh, criminals. Just like Spider-Man was supposed to be called your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Not only Marvel took these, these characters to universes and stuff, but the old comic book world, this is very key, right? Spider-Man was in the neighborhood, I think New York, Manhattan, and almost like Gotham City for Batman. And what the Marvel comics teaches you, which is really all biblical, is know your location. Know what you call to and build that and stop trying to run after every sale and every move. We always got to have the next hottest thing, the next hottest thing, the next hottest thing, the next breakthrough. And God said, if you just stay consistent in the area where I called you to, He says, I will, I, I, will, I, will, I will grow you. And there are people in the body of Christ, and I think those people are like people who I call apostolic. They can operate in, uh, in growing levels. They can start big and grow small. There's certain folks who are multi-gifted. I, I know on my page, I don't carry like a single or anointing. I know guys broke me off in multiple different ways and prepared me uh, with 40 years of experience, but everybody don't have the anointing to do that, and I think it's unfair to compare ministry. That's why I don't like when folks compare singers or they compare different styles of ministry because you might be violating something. I think something, you know, I, I, you know, I just think about this sometime now how we judge other folks' ministries and call folks devils and they don't know what they're doing, and then you do research, you come to find out they're not called to do what you do. Their style is different. Their presentation is different. One of the things, I want to drive this on, one of the things I like about the Batman series is that Batman knew his hometown was Gotham City. And his whole job was to push back the evil when it came to these arch nemesis, especially uh, the Joker or the Riddler, you know, or uh, Mr. Freeze or King Tut or Catwoman. You know, and there's always that number one arch enemy. And that really stands for principalities and powers. I think sometimes, man, there could be a stronghold over a city, over a situation. And God will say, go get the Ghostbusters. Go get a specific group that specifically deals with in this area. We are all uniquely, we are gifted uniquely for our own purpose. Yes, and we need to respect each other's uniqueness. You know, that's that's the key if not in right location, can be hurt or consumed. Always pay attention to the location, different enemies in different locations. That's good, Sister Linda, up ministries. You know, I, I never forget, right, <laughs> you know, uh, probably the most famous uh, arch enemy of Batman, probably back in the 67, was the Penguin. And man, that guy played the role of the penguin. That guy played that role of the penguin, man. And he was so typecast that even when he was on Rocky, I was like, that's the penguin. I mean, he had he had impeded my brain so well with his acting skills. Oh, that's the daggone penguin. And you could never even escape that, man. And man, he played that role, man. He played that role. And, um, you know, and, and Batman... And the Robin had to deal with these certain types of evil in the city of Gotham. And it was able to push the evil back. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times I ask people to go into prayer and begin to do what I call introspective insight. Begin to find out what God called you to do in a specific area. And the more you can focus on the specific area you're called to, the more effective that you can be. I'm telling you, man. Man, at times, man, I could be in a situation and I have like 12 leaders and a classroom around me and the anointing will fall on me. 
it'd be a small group, but the power hits. We did that at the resurrection program. We're not many people, but Reverend Marks and I, the anointing fell, and I could have been teaching and preaching for hours because stuff was coming out of me. And I wasn't getting the emotional response that I may have desired to get, but the effectiveness of it was so powerful because after service was over, they were walking up to me and saying, okay, Pastor, let me ask you this question, that question. And one guy said, I have to admit, after hearing you teach and preach, he says, I have not been on my game. He said, I have not been on my game. This is what he said. He said, he, and he secret tech inboxed me. He says, I was under conviction watching you teach. He said, because I don't do half what you said. He said, I'm tired of looking for the Savior. He said, I must become the Savior. This is what he said, right? Now, this is Michelle and Les, and y'all understand this, right? If I don't push out leaders, we are always dependent on somebody else. Part of my allocation is that if you hang out with KOM, I'm going to be making you work ministry because the more I make you do, the less I have to do. Let me try it again. The more I make you do, the less I have to. You know why a lot of leaders don't like to make other leaders? Because they like the hand claps. They like to say, oh, without you, I couldn't have done it. It was your prayer. It was your anointing. It was your clothes. It was your shoes. People like credit. They want to get credit. They want to get credit. They want credit. They want their name on stuff. After a while, I'll be like, yo, you don't need me. You saw what I do? Get up. I'm sure what they need to do. Now, if this happened around you, do this. I got a lady now, just inbox me. She sent it to my office. I got it from my son. She said, my family member is okay. They went from death to life. And she said, I didn't know I can do that. She said, Reverend McDuffie, I never knew I can do that. I didn't know you could take Jesus' name and do all that stuff. I said, yeah, isn't that awesome? Now, she is so souped. She's telling her family how to use Jesus' name. And she only spoke to me three times. Three times. You know what God told me? Uh, she's in your Gotham City. You specifically gave her instructions and she carried it out. And she saw results. So now she's fired up to minister to other folk in her circle. And she don't have to look for me and call me and help me. Oh. She says, you know what she said? She said, I got it. She said, I know what to do. I got it. I got it. I got it. And watch this lady. You don't even know this. She already bought like three bottles of my sea moss. <laughs> She'll be like some of y'all complaining. It's too expensive. She says, I need another bottle. She says, I need another bottle. Says, I need another bottle. I'm looking at folks be complaining and fussing. These folks just be buying the bottles up, staying healthy and whole. <laughs> she ain't jealous, she ain't mad. She just said, I needed a bottle. Mr. Dictate, bring me another bottle. Bring me another bottle. I need another bottle. <laughs> he says, Oh, I know what this stuff does. I know what it does. I know what it does. You have to tell me I don't need this little bit. If you don't want to, bring me the bottles. <laughs> The Batman in Gotham City. Your allocation is your location. When I saw that article and I saw that eagle grab that pet dog and fly it in midair, that singer, I forgot his name, he's on my page, he says, woe be to you guys who live up at the mountains who allowed this bald eagle to snatch their pet dog. And don't get mad at the eagle for being the eagle. And looking at the eagle, I thought it was an, at least a golden eagle, or Sean said a harpy eagle, who are faster and bigger, and they will, snoop, they will swoop down, grab a dog, a cat, they'll eat their next meal. Know where you live. Know where you live. And let me give you some warnings too. There's a couple of red hawks living up at Eastside Park. And even when you walk your dog by Eastside Park, keep an eye on your dog because by the time a hawk swoop in, they can snatch a dog and snatch a squirrel and keep it going. You just turn around and look and say, where the dog at? Dog done took off. It's about to become someone's meal. That hawk knows his location. You know what? Hawks wasn't really even in this Passaic County area until one of those storms came through. I forgot what storm it was. One of those storms came through and the whole wind and stuff shifted 
and blew the Hawks in this area. And I think the Hawks kind of like, you know what? There's a whole bunch of filet mignon here. And let me just park my uh, my nest in this area. And you got Hawks up by Eastside Park. I saw a squirrel <laughs> do a dodge on a hawk. Just ducked and the hawk missed the squirrel. Missed it. I said, oh, shoot. That hawk was swooping down for the squirrel. That's what happened to my cat in Virginia. A hawk got, oh, see? See? See, we got to be very much aware of our atmosphere, of our location, because in your location is your allocation. When I come back later on, then I'm going to give you more about this whole thing about Batman and Gotham City. And what made Batman so effective as a crime fighter is that he wasn't sent to New York. He was sent to Gotham City. Please know what you sent to. Please know what to say yes to, what to say no to. Please don't feel guilty when folks want you to do something and God told you, I didn't tell you to do that. Learn to tell folk no. Learn to turn folk down. Let me tell you, pastors, let me give you a warning. Don't be running out trying to pray for the world, rescue everybody. Because these folks don't care if you drop dead. They wouldn't care if you died. Man, you'd be worn out from the floor down. My mother said, stop trying to save the world and save your house. You got to learn how to tell folk, no, I'm not going. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm done for the night. <laughs> The Batman and Gotham said, listen, it's about 357. If y'all enjoyed this word today, show your love. I got one seed sown today, Sister Les, so the seed. I think also, let me see my seed sowers today. I want to pray that we get uh, some wisdom for our uh, allocation and location. I want to I want to pray for many of you who are watching as I close out this few minutes. I'm going to be on Matrix of Mike Television in a few minutes, 4 to 5 o'clock. Because I want you to really become more intensified on where God's bringing you. And when God begins to block out other stuff and specifically send you to a specific location, there is an anointing waiting for you. Clarissa, thank you for your seed. Les, thank you for your seed. Michelle, thank you for your seed. Glory be to God. Come on, come on. Rest of you, let's make it happen. Thou sound Pastor Michael 7. Lord God, I pray for all my seed sowers, all my supporters. I pray that we sow seed into the ground and make our spirits attentive to the presence of the Holy Spirit. God, show us where our Gotham City is. Show us the power of the Batman, which really is Christ in us, the hope of glory in our area of ministry. And allow us to master our location because inside of our location is our allocation. And Lord God, deliver us from the spirit of trying to be like everybody else and let us fall in love with our unique self. We love our neighbors and we love ourselves. We claim it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, so you see, Dial Time Pastor Michael 7. Gotta go. God bless you. See y'all later. Thank you, Les. Dial Time Pastor Michael 7. If you give uh, $70, you get a bottle of sea moss. That price is going back to $82. You gotta get your sea moss. Sow the seed, you'll get the sea moss. Let's go. Bottles are selling. God bless you. You can also get our Nutra Burst. Because I'll be getting my bottle started. And I think, I think I'm going to be ordering it tomorrow. Nutra Burst and Sea Moss. You feel like you're 20 years old. Get both. In the master's name of Jesus Christ. God bless. Thank you all so much.